Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name is Adrian Ebell. I am your guest host tonight on the Understanding of Man podcast special edition. And I'm sure you all see the visionary, uh, the man of the hour, uh, multiple book uh, uh, author. Uh, you know, he's he's making moves in these streets, right? Y'all help me welcome to his stage. <laughs> his stage, it'll be King. Good evening, it'll be King. What it do? That's how you come in. Yeah, that, that, that was good. That was good. That is how you come in. That's how you come in. <laughs> Listen, I love it. Now, there's this beautiful lady that's on the screen with us tonight, guys, and I'm going to introduce our topic in just a second. But right. I want to introduce you this, to this beautiful lady. She's smiling. She's gorgeous and very, very single. <laughs> Yo, welcome to the stage, Taina Anthony, MBA. Let's be clear. Come on. Hi, Taina. Hi. Hi, you guys. I miss you guys. What up? Hi, you guys. Oh, exactly. Guys. Look. In Texas. Was it in Texas when we were all together? We were right. Texas for your book signing book. Right, right, right. Uh, that was a, and that was a lot of fun too. That was that a lot was of fun. A lot of fun. So we needed to get together. I was just in California uh, last month and I said, you know what? We need to get together again. And I love watching you and Elam talk back and forth just about relationships and all of that. So tonight, guys, we're here to talk about healing after divorce. And I am a 23-year wife uh, to my best friend and partner, Donald Bell. Shout out to Donald Bell. And um, what up, baby? I, I think it was important that um, sometimes uh, married people tend to um, look down their noses at people that have gone through divorce. And so um, I'm always, you know, people say, you know, divorce is not an option. It is. Okay. So you can go ahead and put that in the comments and we're going to talk about it tonight because divorce is an option. Um, after all, after you've exhausted, there's a song that says after you've done all you can. Okay. And so tonight we're going to talk about that. Even before we get started, anything that's on your heart that you want to shout out before we move with the conversation. No, I'm super excited even just to have you as the host tonight. Uh, what we 20, 25 year friend in, in this game, uh, just of life. And then to even be inside of the space to have you uh, just be a part of that the, the entire way has been an absolute blessing. And then to have just just get bust in the head with this amazing woman, Ty. You know what I'm saying? We, we, we what, two, three years or whatever, but like we are just, that's the homie. Okay. And wow. actually, it's than that, you know? is it like three, four, is it, I, I, three, four, five? 2019. Okay, so how many? I Listen, we just got the 23, y'all. Just give me a second. You got to carry the one. Okay. Four so, years, Elon. Okay, I said, okay, I'm the guy here. Less detail. Okay. So, <laughs> So, uh, you know, but I would say that the top three most watched podcast of the Understanding a Man podcast is with Taina and I. And here's the thing. The file like got corrupted. So it got messed up. So people couldn't even really see the whole thing. But they kept like listening and watch. I don't I didn't only, I don't even understand it. But because uh, we always have great conversations. So super excited. To I even know, be on the like, platform. like he calls me for like the most random stuff i mean we 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 are we are each other's <laughs> ear a lot i i know right and <laughs> what and every, come on ab don't do that don't do me like that don't do that don't do that time, every single time i swear i always say like oh we need to we should have recorded this we should have every time this. yeah it do be like that out of our mouth it's like wait what, what? that was dope I know. <laughs> right. Right. And so, you know, being being an um uh, some I got some feedback from somebody. Can you hear me? I got a little bit of feedback. Yeah, I, I can hear you just fine. 
Yeah, okay, perfect. So, so tonight, this is really a very casual conversation, guys. Um, it's intentional, but it's not going to be stuffy. We're going to, you know, be raw and intentional about making sure that even if you have questions, even if you disagree, we want you to, ha we'll give you an opportunity to come chime in, you know, and if you're saying something that we like, nah, bro, that ain't it, we'll just kick you out of the studio. That's how that works, right? But we're all friends here. We're all family. Right. And so I definitely want to make sure that um, we create an environment where everyone feels heard. Sometimes when women talk about relationships, when women talk about relationships, um, we talk about it's usually for only the only the female side of the story. It's never um, when it comes to divorce, there's really most of the time it's one sided. Right. Meaning the woman is, you know, tells a story or maybe there was some infidelity or whatever the case is. And women cheat, too. Let's be clear. Um, but I feel like we need to have a more comprehensive discussion about divorce. Mm -hmm. And so, Taina, um, how long were you married? And then why did you decide, you know what, I just got to move forward? <clears throat> um, I think that... Uh... Look, I think um, we were married for about, <laughs> we didn't make it to 10 years. I know that. So we were married for nine and a half years and um, we were together for a few, few year, a few years before uh, we got divorced. But, um, you know, for me, it, for me, I just felt like I just stopped growing and mm -hmm. like, not that I stopped growing. I felt like we stopped growing together as a team. Yeah. So um, <laughs> I, tr I always say, you know, and I don't care. I always, Marcus is an amazing guy, which is my ex. Um, uh, he's an amazing guy. And I always say that I felt like I did everything that I could because I wanted to seek uh, help, but uh, we couldn't agree on that. And so- after that, three years went by and nothing, nothing was being fixed. So for me, I just felt like a lot of things were changing in my life at that moment. Yeah. And I just decided that, you know, something I just want to just separate and I just want to end it. And it wasn't that. And yes, I probably was selfish um, because I didn't think about the kids. I didn't yeah. think about. I didn't think about a lot of things, you know, uh, but at that moment, um, it just a lot of things that I was going through and I wanted to be selfish and I was selfish. And did I feel bad afterwards? Yes, I did feel bad, but it's life, right? We can't take things back. But yeah. um, so I decided to just end it. So, yeah. No, and I appreciate your honesty because you were like, yeah, I was selfish. And I appreciate you for saying that because Elam will attest that women can sometimes not take accountability um, when it's the when it's on the shoe is on the other foot. We can. I, and I know that Marcus owns his own stuff. And he has, if I remember correctly, um, when we've talked like, hey, I could have done better. I could have shown up better. And it's great when you can have a, a grown up conversation with the ex. Right. And everybody's not there yet. But, <laughs> you know, I'm thankful that you were able to say, hey, I was selfish. I could have done something different. I didn't think about the kids. And so sometimes, though, when we do walk through our when you do walk through the divorce process, there it shouldn't be you shouldn't be judged. And so for all of you on here right now that's going through a divorce process, please don't feel any type of shame because at the end of the day, you have a reason for the thing that you're the reason that you're doing what you're doing. Right. So, Elam, one of the things that I love about your story, um, you know, you've always been um, transparent, always been upfront, um, but also, of course, doing your best to protect um, your family and making sure that everybody is always looked at in the best light. But ironically, most people don't know that you actually filed for divorce. And most people say men don't file for divorce. Yeah, they do. And here's an example of one who was brave enough to say, yeah, no, that doesn't serve me. That doesn't align with me. That doesn't align with my values or where I'm headed. And so you decided to do that. Talk to a man that's like, so I'm not tripping. Like, I got to get out. 
and 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 again, you guys, this is not to expose anybody's ex. This is not. This is not. We're not even talking about uh, exes, right? The conversation we're having is about healing and moving forward. So, Elam, why did you decide? Yep, I got to move forward. Uh, I, I want to start out by. I apologize. I'm not married, and then uh, why? <laughs> Uh, married 19 years, and I want to first of all just commend Taina for even just sharing uh, her story uh, because this is a space, and those that have entered into the divorce space, it is not an easy topic, um, particularly when you're talking about your story, right? And so uh, the reason why that I love Ty is that not only does she have this amazing, you know, fitness business, rocking and rolling and doing her thing, but then also inside of the space of just personal development, not only for herself, but then to help with other individuals as well to kind of take her story and kind of push and help people to move forward. That's one of the major reasons why that uh, Ty and I have always clicked. And I appreciate your transparency, mm -hmm. Ty, and sharing that because it's not always easy. You know, mom. Uh, you got kids. And so you just, you know, you there's a protection that you have to put over that. Right. Uh, and at the same time, help somebody else to not maybe be put inside of a situation. So I appreciate you, Ty, for just even sharing that to your uh, to your question, uh, Adrian, regarding, you know, the this, this space of divorce when it comes to uh, the, the normal filings about 85 percent of the time women file. Only about 15% of the time, men uh, file for divorce. And I want to preface this by saying that just because you have two good people, sometimes there might be a level of incompatibility, right? And so I think that the biggest piece uh, for Elam inside of the space that was walked there is that one day Elam grew up. And and so one of the things that Taina said earlier, she said she didn't do what she could do or something like that, right? And the thing that jumped into my mind is that I didn't do what I should have done in the beginning, which mm -hmm. is have a better understanding of myself. So when Ty, when you were just speaking, I caught more of like you could in the moment. And I'm if I had to speak to the men, I'm going to go to the should of before. Mm -hmm. Right. And this is one of the reasons why the pre-marriage space is so important to me uh, is that there's an understanding of leadership that we as men have to make sure that we walk into prior to committing in, to a relationship with somebody else's brain. We have to make sure that we commit to our own brain and have an understanding of ourselves. I okay. share with people often that Elam King uh, grew up and became Elam B. King at 35. Right. Uh, all before then, I was just like doing this thing. Right. And just living right and there was a moment where i grew up and understood a certain aspect of purpose and as that began to grow and i began to expand that it's a blessing and a curse it's mm -hmm. a blessing because uh the, the excitement and, and what i'm moving forward of and helping others and stuff like that but at the same time it's almost like eating from the tree of knowledge and good and evil right i when i bit the apple of an understanding of myself i said wait a minute here is an amazing person. Here is an amazing person, but there is not the level of congruency that should exist to bring that longevity was not something that I, I would have lived inside of a hypocritical space at that point. And so understanding that that's it, 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 it does not it will go down as the toughest decision ever made. Uh, but um, I know that there's a restoral process. I, and I understand that as we continue to walk down this path to to not only have an understanding of ourselves, but then also to help others, the biggest blessing that's going to come out of it is watching others flourish inside of their relationships. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I feel like, um, let me ask you this, Tyena, before I go there. When you, was it surprising to learn that our friend actually filed? Was that surprising or were you like, yeah, I got it. Because we can sometimes, again, women can sometimes be judgmental. I didn't judge. Well, I judged them a little bit, but <laughs> then, uh, I did. I I vacillated between my judgment. I can be honest, but because I was fighting with him, right? And so, and he, when I say fighting with him, meaning I wanted it to work too. So, Tanya, did that surprise you when you're like, oh, okay, wow? Because you had already gone through the process. Yeah, I would have thought that she would have filed. <laughs> That's I tough. mean, just based on him, just <laughs> friend. I'm sorry, friend. 
Like what? Come on, Fred. Come on, Fred. But that's but that. But I'm okay. But God, God, God. God. A whole lot of piece of work. I'm sorry. Okay, let me rewind it. No, you're right. You a piece of work. Y'all know. You're right. Piece of work. You're right. But um, yeah. But his. But, his, but I appreciate you saying that. And but here's the thing about Elam. He's okay with that. So Elam, you seemed to have appreciated what she just said. I, the 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 thing is here is that let's just look at this. Uh, Ty's level of discernment for me on uh, I'd say on this side of life, she's catching me on this side, and I'm in a in, in a space to whereas I'm looking for and, and increasing and walking from a personal development perspective, right? And so I the one thing I love, and I'm gonna say this, and I don't know why people don't like when their friends judge them. I need friends that judge me, right? I need them to look and be like, yo, like, what are you doing? I'd be like, you know, just love, love your friends for who they are. Like, no, be like, yo, call me on my stuff. Be like, yo, that's not AB, come on. I mean, how many thousands of times have you called me on my stuff? Been very resistant. We have knocked down, drag out. I ain't talking to you for a couple of months, couple of weeks, couple of days or whatever. And what, the reason why that, that, the, the synergy still exists is because I, I respect it and I know that she comes from a love perspective. Same thing with Ty. And this goes both ways with Ty and I because sometimes I'd be like, nah, Ty, nah, that ain't okay. You know what I'm saying? And she'd be like, what? I'm just saying, you know, you know when you know you're wrong, they'd be like, what? <laughs> I need a friend. It's a, it says, judge not lest ye be judged. I, so, lest ye be, I choose to want to be judged by my friends. So if you are my friend, you're going to get judged because I want you to judge me. <laughs> no, like, right. don't, don't be my friend. If you don't want to get judged, I'm like, you look bad today. Your breath stink. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, that was stupid that you said on social media. You, got, you didn't do that right with your kid. But uh, both of y'all on the phone, have I taken feedback from y'all in that space? Absolutely. Absolutely. I didn't talk to Elon for six months. And he had to call my husband and was like, hey, man, say, man, I know your wife mad at me. Because when you really, and this is around this whole topic of divorce, mm -hmm. but I felt like, bro, you moving funny. And I feel like that's the thing with the once you, it, he, divorce, went to heal after divorce, you even have to prepare for the divorce properly. So even those that those of you that are thinking about getting a divorce for whatever reason, you have to properly prepare. And so I asked Elam a very important question. Can you say you've done everything you can? And he told me straight up no. Right. So Elam moved forward. Now, as we decide, as we talk to people who are they're like, this is great. So glad y'all have decided to make this move. So now Elam, as a relationship specialist, coach, strategist, and for the record, Elam legitimately has clients, okay? All right? So I just want, no, I'm serious, because sometimes people feel like, well, how can you be a relationship uh, expert and you're divorced? Easy, because I can tell you what not to do. And so he and I would have those conversations, like, you know, I don't want to be a hypocrite. I don't want to be out here telling people they need to stay married, and I'm not. I was like, you absolutely can because, and then I have your back as a married person. Elam has helped me off the ledge many times in my marriage, right? So Elam, as a relationship expert, what is the biggest issue that you hear couples that are either recovering from divorce because some couples divorce and then get remarried, right? Um, and I'm always open to that if the couple comes back together and, you know, they get it together. When you coach your clients, what is the biggest challenge that they go through that you want them to avoid? Someone that is watching, everybody's not divorced that's watching. Some people are married. What would you tell them? Please don't do this because you're going to end up in, in a coaching session with me or something. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I, I want to say that just to highlight just for about 30 seconds, it, there was a point where, and I want to thank you, um, Adrian, I want to thank you, Ty, as well, because both of you guys know there was a point where I wanted to get out of this space. Um, yeah. that I, I just felt like that I was not good enough because, you know, how am I in this space? 
and I'm helping other people, right? Isn't that hypocritical, right? It doesn't make any sense. And so, yeah, in the Bible, we hear about Saul turning into Paul, but that ain't got nothing to do with me. I'm over here like, yo, what, what, why am I in this space? Let me get out. And you, my pastor, my therapist, um, and, uh, and, 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 my, and my close friends such as Ty, they was just like, yo, like you can't get out, you know? And so then to stay in there and then be able to even move forward, be able to answer a question of what you're saying. I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting. And so I would say that the biggest thing that I've run into and, and constantly hear about and where the, the battle exists is knowledge of yourself. And not only knowledge of yourself, because we've heard something like that before. So let's just walk there. I'm going to put an addendum to that is having a level of emotional intelligence, having an understanding of who you are and the direction of where you're going to go. Because here's the thing. Sometimes raise his hand. You don't know who you are in the beginning. Right. You just might just be going down the track of life and people wouldn't even have known that I'm just like I'm just running down this train and I don't even know what's going on. This thing is working out, but uh. I don't know what's going on right now. And and then when and along the way, I feel like the God loves us enough to say, hey, you know, send us little hints of different things or what have you. And yeah. so as that happens, sometimes we hear it and we'll put it to the side. We'll hear it and we'll put it to the side. We'll hear it. to You know, we'll, as I like to say, I tell God, I'll be right back after these messages. Like, I'm going to go do what I want to go do. I'm going to give you a commercial break, God, and let me go over there. And so the constant test is sent inside of your direction of where you're supposed to go. So if you're not paying attention to who you are and that knowledge of self and having that level of emotional intelligence, then there's going to be a gap. Yeah. Right. And then once that gap exists, sometimes we uh, look to the other person to fill that gap. Mm -hmm. And that person doesn't have the capability of filling that gap. Only you can fill that gap. Right. So uh, as we move from, let's just say you're with somebody and then y'all break up, as you said, and then you, you know, y'all miss each other and oh, you know, you, you miss all that. Hey, let me tell you something really quickly. You actually get into somebody's central nervous system and you can do your own research on that. That's the reason why that you'll see a domestic violence situation and somebody getting absolutely beat up and you're saying, okay, why would they go back to them? And then like a week later, they're back with them. Soul ties are really real. You get yes, entrenched are. into somebody's central nervous system where you begin to love the person who you were when you were with that person. Not the bad times, but the good times. So then right. you begin to miss that. You link back up and then you're like, oh, I want to miss this and I want to get back with the person and all this and that. Right. And you haven't healed through mm -hmm. what was the challenge or guess what? You haven't walked through who you are as an individual and developed that area and then understood, hey. You are not the person that I can do forever with. You are a season. Mm. And that season of the unfortunate moment where you might have to hit the pause and redo, right, is because you didn't do the due diligence on the front end. So you're going to pay for that. But what about the super religious people that say, no, you have to stay married. God wants you to stay married no matter what. Uh, Ty, I thought you go. Ty, you want to comment on that? Are you talking to me? Is it like you know? I, I know. Yes. Ty, Ty, you go first. <laughs> you the relationship er expert. I mean, I, I mean, I could, listen. I can say like this. I know that, um, and I feel that, and I don't have the scripture in front of me, but the despisal um, uh, from God of divorce or whatever. I understand that and that that break. But here's the thing. What we have to understand is that a lot of times we think that God blessed the union when God never blessed the union. That part. We forced that part on there. Um, did we really do the due diligence that we do for jobs? Did we really do the due diligence that we do when we're going to go buy a home? When we're looking for a school for our children? When we are, you know, just researching a vacation? Some of us research vacations for two, three years from now in a manner bigger than you're researching the person that you're with. Come on. Y'all already at the end of 2025 talking about you're going to go to South Africa and all these excursions you're going to do, but you haven't even researched the background of the generational curses of the person that you're with. Mm -hmm. Let alone your own generational curses to understand how that can impact your marriage. 
Mm -hmm. You're not even walking in purpose, but you want to commit to somebody else. And then you want them to satisfy the level of happy that you actually should be satisfying for yourself first. That's good. Okay. So, uh, you know, I, I, I would just I would just caution as we because June is right around the corner. And I believe June is the number one month for marriages. Mm -hmm. uh, and then after that is October. Um, Valentine's Day just passed, which is the second biggest day that people got engaged. The day the, the first biggest day is Christmas Eve. Right. Right. So guess what? People, there's right now there's a bunch of people, uh, you know, 40, 45, 50, 60 days in and they like I'm married and you ain't do nobody's pre-marriage counsel. You ain't doing nobody's research. That part. But just because the sex is good and the teeth is nice and they make cute babies, you want to go ahead and stay with them. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. All right. What's in your cup, though? Because I'm going to have to log you off. It is water. It is a clear fluid. I'm going to have to log you off. Tina, so do you wish, do you wish, what do you wish that you knew before getting married? What do you wish you knew? Elam said what he thought he wished he knew. What do you wish you knew before? Um, well, for me, like, I would say, like, our my marriage with Marcus was beautiful. Like, we did the pre-marriage uh, counseling. Um, you know, I just feel like uh, Elam highlighted, like, the most important thing, right? Understanding the self, right? And I just feel that, for me, it just, I was... <laughs> I was doing personal development, my, you know, as, as I was growing, um, my mind was expanding. I was, uh, being exposed to other communities. So I started learning other things and, um, I started growing in different areas of my life and Marcus wasn't growing with me. Um, we weren't growing together. So I feel that, once I was, you know, doing this personal development and personal development, it's like a lot of healing that takes place in that. Right. So yeah. when you're healing, you're peeling a lot of layers off of you. And so when layers are coming off, you're discovering so many things about yourself that you didn't even know. And so um, so these things were happening as I was with Marcus and, um, you know, it just it just went like this so yeah. um so i wouldn't honestly i wouldn't i don't have anything that i can say con concrete that i would say that i would change because um uh, when i met marcus i i left an abusive relationship so mm -hmm. for me um going with marcus was growth that was mm -hmm. like he treated me with so much respect with so much love has never just respected me. Um, and, you know, I had two beautiful girls. I had six month daughter uh, at the time. And my other daughter was a few years old. And you know what man takes in, you know, steps in and fills in another uh, man's responsibility, you know, and, <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, like he was amazing. I, I mean, I, I don't know. It's just I we were growing different ways, right? So I wouldn't change anything, Adrian. Like, but I will, I I do want to step in and say um when when Elon was talking about just understanding the self, that's what I will say. Like, life after divorce for me has been healing, like. It's been healing. Like, um, I remember, you know, writing, I, I've, it's crazy because I've sat down and I've written down so many things of like, what have I, what have I done in the last few years um, mm -hmm. since I've been divorced when Elon invited me to do the podcast? And I said, shit, I hope I can cuss. But I was like, fucking shit, bitch. You went in the paint. I went in the paint, y'all. Let me tell y'all. Let me give me these two minutes of like moment of highlighting myself. Go ahead, sis. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. I wrote two books. Okay. I wrote two books. Uh, one was a compilation of something that I don't know what happened, but the other one was a fat 40 uh, I am affirmation book. 
40 affirmations to just affirming yourself, right? This book was so healing to me. I didn't understand why I got this idea of writing a book, right? And this book was so healing for me. Um, I ran a marathon. I, I got my master's degree. I got 600 hours, 600 hours of yoga certification. You know, I took time to heal relationships with my daughter, with my kids, just, you know, just so many things that I've done. And I'm like, wow, like this was my healing, understanding the self, right? So a mm. lot of the times um, we, we, we get a divorce and we're so quick to filling the gap, right? Mm. Like, oh, Come on. Fill the gap with Come on. junk. And then it doesn't necessarily have to be a particular person. It can be substance. It can be just habits that are not healthy right and so i want to say when um i remember i was in tears right you have those those angels that you call on to people that you know love you and would just tell you the truth so i remember being on the phone with adrian and i was <laughs> crying in the middle of writing this book right and you know this book is crazy the healing process is ugly it's ugly and i'm like i don't but she's like you have to have that conversation i'm like but i don't want to i can't and she said you gotta have you ever read the book the seven stages of grief mm, that, come on speak to it that's that sta seven stages of grief book it's you know you go through all these processes right yeah. and yeah. every she said i want you to take that book read it and I want you to apply that to every single thing that is creating resistance in your life. When I say resistance, just like when you think about it, it gives you like this, this like, Ugh, like, uh, like this feeling that doesn't feel good. And so I did. And I started to journal and that was hard. And just just last year, I, I finished and um, I'm just like when I talked to Adrian a month ago, she's like, how do you feel? And I was like, I'm so joyful. Like, I feel so good. Like, just so much healing. Like, oh my God. So I don't want to take up all the space, but I just wanted to share that the healing process after like a divorce is very important. And me and Marcus had, it's the healing myself has allowed me to go back mm -hmm. and talk to him and heal a lot of areas in our life where we had a lot of challenges and that that con those conversations were tough y'all those was tough mm -hmm. and Marcus last year has been the toughest conversations we've had but so healing it's like wow <laughs> we didn't talk to each other for weeks but then we'll come back and we'll talk about the the conversation so you want to talk about it now uh yeah let's talk about it right you know we went out to dinner talked about it we got on the phone talked about it we met up talked about it and it was a constant constant to where now we're like wow we're actually growing as parents yeah. together you know and so <laughs> i don't know what you know god is doing i don't know so um but I love the the way that the healing that we're doing together as parents, because at the end of the day, y'all, the kids are 12. The twins are 12. Right. And um, my daughter is 17. And so we still have to parent together. Yeah. We still have yeah, to. That's right. We that's have right. to. Still, the kids still sense the energy, the love between mm -hmm. us. So if I'm not happy when he's around, they feel that tension. I don't want my kids to, 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 you know, to raise, to, I guess, to, to grow up thinking that it's okay to have an unhealthy relationship with yeah. someone that you have to have a relationship with. Right. Right. So when the kids see us, we're happy together. We're, we're, we still do a lot of family stuff together and, I'm just so grateful that God has like really healed our relationship, you know? Um, that's so good. 
That's so good. And I, I'm thankful that you brought up the children because um, one of the things that I love that Elam always talks about, um, you know, when we we have coached other cl uh, couples together, um, you know, that are either going through or, or, you know, on the other side. And so one of the things he always talks about is how we show up, especially after divorce, when it comes to our children. And so Elam, uh, from how, how a person that either, especially those that are recently divorced, any advice to those on both sides, male or female, hey, do this when, when it comes to our children, this is what I beg for us to do. Oh, when it comes to our children, uh, I, it's, it's, it is something that I want to first talk to the gentleman and I want to first under, help you to understand. I was watching something on Instagram yesterday, I actually uh, put it on my stories because I thought it was interesting how he was breaking down how the court system exists. Right. And we have to understand as men that the court system is not going to normally be favorable uh, for us. So we have to understand that when you go through a divorce, gentlemen, that you go through more than one divorce. Right. You go through a divorce from you and your spouse. You go through a divorce from you and your children. And then you go through a divorce from you and your things. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we understand the one that you go through with you and your spouse. Well, you go through one with you and your children because most likely the children are going to go with her. Right. Okay. Sure. So the, what you knew is no more. Mm. Right. She's normally with them at, at the same amount of time. Give or take. If you if you get your weekend or whatever, you know, what I'm saying. But other than that, it's pretty it's pretty static for her. But for us, it's, it, it has a tendency to right. become different. That's a divorce. That's right. That's a total separate. And that's a restructuring of the understanding and, and, the, and the walk through that. And so that is something that, you know, it's it's it, it can hit you like a ton of bricks. And uh, honestly, that's something that I'm currently navigating through, to be very honest with you about that. And so then you have a divorce from you and your things because a lot of your things are going to like that, like your things are gone. like <laughs> They're going to go with her. Right. And I, I'm laughing, but it's totally not funny. Right. When it when it really happens. Right. And so uh, you have to understand that that's why it's so important on the front end to make the proper decision. And then as you make the proper decision as a parent, then you're actually able to pass that down to your children, right? Because mm -hmm. uh, some of this with regard to when you run into it, it's kind of like you're, you're it's like triage, like, you know, your, your jugular is like spitting out all this blood and you're trying to, you got tourniquet here and there or whatever. And so, you know, I would want to implore everybody that it's, 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 it's more important for you to get you right so that if you if you got you wrong from before, it's OK to hurry up and get yourself right so that you can pass that down to your children. My sons are way better than me inside of relationships right now than I than I was at their age. Holy cow. I was like, the, the you know, how a dog with the little pink thing hanging out and how to be running like that was me at their age. Right. And they they don't they don't run around like that. And they're able to be like, yeah, about that child support. Uh, I don't want to <laughs> don't wanna be a part of that. So, yeah, let me just, uh, you know, so I would just say that, you know, getting yourself right and in, in, in the moment, it's so difficult to kind of really give a silver bullet to the, the, but I'd say the biggest piece is what I did was I was open with my children about, hey, this is where I am. This is where we are. And you know, and fortunately, I had, you know, some grown people to be able to, it's some, you know, the grown adults, the, the grown kids, they were able to embrace things a little bit. So it made it a little bit easier for me. Yeah. And I love um, for those of you who don't know Elam's story it, um, a little bit, he did um, come into a blended situation, just like Taina said. Taina said, well, what? Who, who's going to take on somebody else's kids? Elam. And so when you so then it's so that it's almost like. A, a fourth divorce, if you will, Elam, because you had to build a relationship even with the ch those children that you came into the relationship with, right? right so there right. were some that, so you had, a, you know, some that were there from the beginning, and then there were some that came after the journey started. So right. this this this, the, this mantling of a family, you know, it's not funny. You know, sometimes people they have divorce parties. Hey, do you? I don't think it's funny, but I get it. 
because you're if you've been in a situation that where you've been in bondage where you've been a domestic violence um you've been um uh you know uh, multiple infidelities one infidelity whatever your boundary is right um because some women they say when i divorced my husband it had nothing to do with he cheated but that's not why i left him right or he you know whatever or she cheated but that's not why i left her there's always everybody has has a reason why they're doing what they're doing right mm -hmm. so you can't so i'm asking you guys when you hear people going through a divorce even if you are divorced please don't judge somebody else's decision mm -hmm. right when i was judging elam i wasn't judging elam's decision i was judging are you sure you did your part and if you have, I always talk about having life board of directors, right? You got to have people in your life that, that say, hold on now, wait a minute. Like when I call myself, going to leave my husband, they'd be, they be like, girl, go sit down. You ain't right. nobody, okay? <laughs> so, no, no, but it's the truth. And so, you know, but if I express, when I express myself to my, my husband, he'll say, oh, that's an issue. Okay, let's fix it. So if you have a situation where um, where your spouse is trying to, or even your ex, don't feel bad if you remarry. I tell, I even gave Elam, Elam, you can attest to this. I said, maybe the divorce is the divorce. And then maybe you get back together later on. There's always hope. Right, and then some of y'all like ain't no hope, ain't no Jesus, <laughs> ain't no oil, ain't no counseling, ain't nothing you can tell me to get back with that man or woman. I get it, I totally get it. Um, but don't judge the people that remarry. I have a family member, she remarried, and they're literally living happily ever after. Mm -hmm. The first 16 years of their marriage, it was it was hell on earth, but now. They're like newlyweds. They're like, they literally started over and I respected the fact that they started over. So that's an option too, guys. As you're healing, you might get back with your spouse. So if you're watching this and you're like, maybe, maybe it's a possibility, Taina and Elam are saying, work on yourself. Don't try to fix your, 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 your ex. That's not, the, that's not the key. Fix yourself. Yeah. Um, thank you guys for commenting. Uh, uh, Candace said, um, yes, there is always hope. I love seeing broken marriages restored. And I do too. Um, also, um, Gina said, this is good. Thanks for joining guys. I appreciate, we appreciate the discussion. Also, if you want to come in and you want to just jump in, maybe you've gone through a divorce. Um, also common law marriages, do y'all do y'all receive that as, as divorce too? Cause I feel like if you've been with somebody 40 years, and then you decide, yeah, what is that in Virginia and in Georgia? I, it, the common law, yeah, like you with them after seven years or whatever. I mean, that's just uh, listen. That's how people want to do stuff. I mean, you just live right. Committed. But what I'm saying is, is that if if a person, if, if I've been with somebody for for you know however long the common law is in your state, and then we decide to divorce, that's still painful because my entire life. Has yeah, revolved absolutely. around this union, right? Absolutely. This agreement, these bills, this house. Right. Yeah, I, the only difference is it's not legal. Mm -hmm. I agree. And so that's where there's a difference because that financial piece, that 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 tear of of of, of equity, that tear of uh, that that exists inside of a legal space. The emotional space, I can I can agree with you on that. It, it's it's it would be, you know, I'll, we'll put them at fifty fifty. Yeah. For the sake of argument. But there's other aspects that, that go into when you make that bond from a, a legal marriage perspective. Absolutely. And if you want to come in the studio, this is just we're having this conversation. Look, Valentine's Day is over. OK, people got to live their fantasy during Valentine's Day. You went out on the date with the dude, with the girl. And he was like, oh, that was a waste of my time. So you want to come in and maybe you do have some advice, advice. You don't have to be divorced to have a conversation. Um, now, again, if you say something, we like, bro, now nah, we'll just say thank you for your time and you go and have a nice night. OK, but you are more than welcome to come in. Um, the link is in the comments. If you want to just join, if you want to encourage Elam and Tyena, they're in real time, healing after divorce. So if you have something that you want to say, please come into the studio. We'll be happy to to join. Uh, have you join us. Chastity Sanye said it probably 
uh, the symptoms of a divorce with a man while in the marriage regarding the children because they have been disconnected due to the wife on the front line. Come on. Ooh. Kanye, you need to come in on this because she's been, she's been, she's uh, been married before as well. And so she knows, she knows because sometimes people, especially when you've been around individuals and you think you know them that, and you're changing and the person is staying the same, that's a scary notion. So all, so remember for those of the Bible thumpers, they're like, huh, divorce is not an option. Divorce is an option. If my, if the God made divorce, he created it. He created it. He was like, I'm not going to have you in a bondage situation where somebody doesn't want to be married. So when people say God, divorce is not an option, that is not biblical. It's not in the Bible. Okay. So for you Bible thumpers that try to keep people in bondage and make them stay in things that God has not ordained, that is wrong. That's judging. Because you don't know their situation. You don't know what they're dealing with. Now, for those of you who just want to divorce because it's cute and the next man has a bigger, uh, can I say penis? I don't, I don't know. Can I? I, I Here's the thing. I, 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 belief. I, I, I've known this man for 25, 26 years. And he's very conservative. So I have to be very careful what I say. Um, and I respect his platform because we just say what we need to say over on over on uh, in my department. But sometimes women, and I can only speak for the women, we will leave a relationship if the sex ain't good. Come on, ladies, stop it. You know somebody that left their man because the sex wasn't good. I'm like, but sis, wow. Well, then a lot of people were virgins when they got married, so they didn't know. But I'd be like, if this was the only man you were ever with, how would you know if it wasn't good? But what we do is we have locker room talk to ladies, and we'll be like, girl, he not doing this, he not doing this, and your girlfriend will talk you into getting a divorce. You got to be careful the circle that you have around protect your marriage. Gina said, I'm happily married, but this is good info just in case he wake up Monday acting stupid. I hate her. I hate her. That's why I said I'm out of Jacksonville. I know that's right, but you're not going to do my friend tonight, though, Gina. Uh, uh, common law marriage, Chastity Sanye says, common law marriage, also known as marriage without the formalities or informal marriage, is a valid and legal way for a couple to marry in Texas. Yes, this is in Texas. That is very true. So even though but then there's that spiritual aspect that we have to keep in mind, because even though God has given us an option as a certificate of divorce, which again, look it up. If you don't believe me, just Google certificate of divorce in the Bible. OK, because, you know, people try to test your soul. Right. I'm never going to talk about anything I have not researched. OK, so if you're if you're thinking about getting divorced, you're thinking about it, you, you prayed about it. God will release you. From a situation that it's not, it doesn't have to be just toxic. If your spouse is unwilling to make the adjustment, you can file. What do you think about that, Emo? I, I mean, I, I I can agree with you, uh, and I think that we we have a situation. I, I know it was something I was watching a, a couple of years ago, and it was just saying how if you see a man or a woman in a uh, in the latter years let's say like they were just talking like 60s or 70s or whatever and and when they're in the presence of their significant of their spouse there isn't that there's just kind of like a a, a lull uh a, a not a spark you don't you don't see the energy right yeah. that exists yeah. between them right and they might have been together for like 30 40 50 years right so it would seem like and i'm not talking about they got to be kissy huggy poo and all that i'm just talking about there's a love that you can kind of see between them. And I think that, you know, it's, it is possible to have that further down the road because people, and I want to just go with this part. They, they think about that down the road, right? But you have to look at the front end of that and understand the due diligence and the work that you need to do in order to make a, a relationship stay together. So everybody doesn't qualify to be married. Okay. I want to make sure that I, I, you know, just because you're, no, I need you to stop what you're doing. I need you to put that in the comments. Post that on your social media. What? Everyone <laughs> does not qualify for marriage. 
Elon King. And so because of that, I mean, it, it, think about it. It's, it's, it's no differently than school, right? You could be a smart person, but you don't qualify to go to, you know, a Stanford. You don't qualify to go to, you know, a Hampton. You don't qualify to go. I mean, so, you know, you, you might put in your application at a job and have a nice resume, but you don't qualify for this position. And I think that we have to understand that we are actually willing to qualify to be in a sport because you try out. OK, mm -hmm. we're, we're willing to, 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 to have interviews to see whether we can, you know, qualify for this position. And when we don't, we kind of tighten our resume up, tighten ourselves up and then move forward and still go for the same position again. Right. Yeah. So uh, what I think that there might need we need to look at if we're looking forward here is to begin to work on qualifying for the position that we're looking for. And I think that if we if you think that you got it all together and you're single, but you desire to be married and it's been an extended amount of time because that's not there, there's a gap and only you can fill that gap. That gap's not going to get filled by somebody else. And yeah. so, you know, it, we have to do some some we have to turn that mirror around yeah. and look at ourselves and be like, listen, like the only common denominator between all of my failed relationships is me. Because there's 3.5 billion opposite sex people on this planet. And if all of them have done the exact same thing to you, who's the common denominator? Mm. You keep making the same decisions because you're drawing in that energy because there's a gap that exists in you and us. Right. And if you desire to be in a relationship that's going to have a level of longevity, I would ask you to begin to look at what that gap is. If you are currently in a marriage. Right. And you just have to say to yourself, OK, well, you know what, whether or not that I'm going to go and leave this marriage, take a look at your gaps first. And understand whether can I fill these gaps? And if I can't fill these gaps, it's almost it, 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 that that's where your homework is Go in on that. And after you go to work on you and work to fill in those gaps, then you can turn around and say, OK, I know what I need and, and how I can how I can move forward. Right. And then you're able to present that information and take a look at the, the, the even the person that you've already chosen to be with and then make the educated decision inside of counsel, inside of prayer. And then you you'll, you'll have an opportunity of knowing which directions you're going to go in. What Chastity yeah. said for you to elaborate on your statement on why individuals are not qualified to be married. Oh. Ooh, oh, Ty, Ty, we can go like Ty, we can go, we can go all day on that one. Well, Ty, oh, do, you agree, do you agree with that statement? Oh. I, I was when he said, let me tell you, when he said everybody isn't qualified, I said. What this is what I said in my head. I said, What you mean by everybody ain't qualified? Well, what does that mean? How do you get qualified? So for so me, mm -hmm. for me, um, I just I I don't agree with that exact comment. I would say just kind of um I would say that everybody has a possibility to to become to get qualified right um so it's just so everyone has a choice mm -hmm. so it goes there so i always say it's not that everyone's not qualified no everyone has a choice i love the disagreement because I, 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 you, we do this on the phone all hold on, hold on. so you're bad no but only thing you did was you just put like a nice piece of velvet around a course statement right around a course object right that's all that you just did bottom line is doesn't tie i know you somebody has to qualify to date you Okay, it ain't just everybody does not I'm qualify. Not, I'm not talking about myself. I'm okay, I'm just saying, but I'm saying everybody I'm knows, so, but you're no different. If you are a person of substance and value, somebody has to qualify for you. And if they don't, like, let's have a whole nother conversation. Even though I know Ty, people got to qualify for you. So I don't care what you talk about tonight. I know that. But if nobody, hold on, wait a minute, hold on. Just because, listen, just because they got a pulse. They don't qualify. Now here he go. They don't. Everybody got a pulse qualify for you, Ty. 
She said, "We ain't talking about me." That's what she said. Okay, okay, okay. Let's throw this. To, let's throw this to Facebook. A certain type of caliber man that I like. Right. And so they I just. Mean, I haven't reached the level of success that I that because they don't qualify for no, you. You ain't saying nothing not, different. Well, they don't qualify. Now. Well, hold on. Let me interject. I think what we need to get clear on, Elam, is your statement of what do you mean by the word qualified? Does oh, I, can, I, 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 can, I can make it very simple. Let's just go. Let's just go to the love languages. Right. OK. In order to qualify. In, OK. In order to qualify. We're going to go just baseline. Right. We're not going to go in, in depth. In order to qualify for Elam. OK. Words of affirmation and physical touch has to be something that you are willing to do. It doesn't have to be your love language. Right. right. But it has to be the one that you're looking to satisfy for me. If you're looking for me to give you gifts, if you're looking for quality time, there's going to be a spike. Right. Because I'm just out here just doing my thing sometimes. Right. And so I, it doesn't mean that I have not found and cannot find quality time. It's just that if that's at the top of your list, there's going to be a spike that's going to exist there. So I'm going to walk into this relationship saying that this one is my challenge. If you want this at 100 percent, you're not going to get it. Okay, right. so, I, so I don't qualify. So I said, if you don't, if you don't, if you're not a person that wants to speak words of affirmation towards me, if you're not a person that what likes to kiss me when I leave, kiss me when I come back, hold my hand, you know, what I'm saying I'm slapping booties, I'm grabbing, you know, what I'm saying like, if you don't like touchy feely, like we don't qualify. You don't qualify for me. You see what I'm saying? Okay, Real quick. So now, okay, so now, so now you're 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 speaking. Okay, so I think that there's just a miscommunication. So you're speaking, you're speaking qualification for as far as for you. Everybody doesn't qualify to be married to you, okay, or marry material or whatever. But I guess the comment or we as a like people, we were thinking like qualify as a general for marriage. And that I is a that, but that it's, it's it's the same thing. I mean, he's I, saying, but but I, I, hear I, I am saying that. That's what I agree with you. I am saying that you qualify for marriage for me. Qualify for marriage to a person. I just happen. I just happen to know me. Uh, most people don't know themselves. But here's the thing. Even when people don't know themselves, there's still a qualification. It's just like they just kind of like bump into it, right? Everybody has a qualification for themselves. But I think we need to get clear, though, Elon, for the sake of the audience, that there's two definitions of qualifications that you're referring to. There's yeah. some people that don't qualify for marriage, period. Marriage, the institution. Absolutely. And there's people that don't qualify for marriage to you. or to Absolutely. You. So I what Aina is saying is she doesn't think it's fair to say everybody's not qualified for marriage. Now, here's where I don't like to use the term devil's advocate, but this is what I'm going to say, Taina. I agree with Elam's statement on being qualified for the, for the institution of marriage, because number one, some people are whores and will never stop sleeping around. So if you know you will not stop sleeping around, you do not qualify for marriage. So it's still a choice. So you it's, choose. It's, it's, a cho it's a choice on the individual side. But yeah. if I present marriage to you yeah. and you're like, hey, I'm, I'm still going to cheat. I want to be polyamorous. I want blah, 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 blah. Okay, well, that's not what the institution of marriage, biblically speaking, is about. Yeah. Right? So, mm -hmm. so so we got to, we do have to receive. So don't take the word qualification as in good enough or um, not polished enough. It's not really qualified as in you're incapable, but some people, like you said, they choose not to qualify. They choose mm -hmm. not to qualify. Yeah. Cause I just like when he talks. No, no. So what name an entity. What? On planet Earth. What is he talking? No, 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 no. Listen, listen. Hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me. Hear me, hear me, hear me. Uh, for the okay. people that are watching, this, this is what we do when the cameras are off. So I know. <laughs> no, 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 because I, I can't let you slide. In my opinion, I can't let you slide that in there, right? As if everybody is capable. Everybody is not capable no, no, of being. No, 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 no. I agree. Everyone okay. is not capable. 
But okay. everyone has the um, opportunity, let's say that. Absolutely. The opportunity, and that's all Tyena is saying. Yeah. Have, okay. Let's not, let's not um, put people in a box and say, you don't qualify, you don't qualify, because there are a lot of people who do struggle with, do I qualify? I'm 76 and ain't never been married. I'm 76, ain't got no kids, right? And that's where a check a check off list should be like given. And that's where the whole free marriage counseling thing comes in, right? Yeah, no, I no, I totally agree. But see, here's where Elam gets stuck. No, but it, this is what Elam does. Elam gets stuck. I'm looking at the time and I'm just like, you know what? Let, let's just go ahead and wrap this Elam up. Elam gets stuck because he wants to, he likes to have these what we call black and white statements, right? And I'd be like, Elam, it ain't always black and white in some cases, right? Candace says some people aren't on your level to qualify, especially when you know your worth, you aren't going to put up with the shenanigans. And that is true. Absolutely right. true. I want to go to the next question that um, Chastity said. Chastity, I hope we answered your question. And again, you guys can come in the studio. The link is in the comments. So if you come in the studio, we will let you in. Um, uh, Chastity said the checkoff list can blow up in your face. It shows Amen. Me. Amen to that. Some people got these ridiculous lists. You got it. Your list need to reflect who you. Oh God, what time is it? No, I no, it. Not... People when be you... having it. Chastity, you might just need to come on in because you know you might need to get with Elam. See, me and Tyena do this all the time with him, but you might need to. You might need to come on and sign yay him. You feel me? Well, it's, um... it's... I did what did I say that was incorrect? The only thing that we had to bring to the table is you said everybody has the same opportunity. I agree with that. I'm just saying everybody's not capable. Everybody has the same opportunity. I agree. I, agree. I do agree. Everybody has the same opportunity to be in a marriage. Why you gotta do your hands like that though. Right? Because it's this it's just giving love to everybody, uh -huh. right? Yeah, but right? I'm just all right. So the question to Tyena was what is your opinion? of the qualification of marriage from a man and or a female. So how does a woman qualify for marriage? How does a man qualify for marriage in your opinion, Tyena? Um, for me, how does a man qualify for marriage? For me, um, is like just for me, connection, connection is number one. So just connecting and like, the whole mind, body, and spirit. If we have connection in those areas, then there's already some qualification just there. Like, I don't want to drag this for a whole extra hour, but, and it goes for yeah, just I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Ladies oh my as well. Just, it goes back for both sides. If there's a connection there, then that's a qualification, period. And so you're saying, well, what about for the the um, the man? What should he expect, in your opinion? Should it be as tailored as Elam is very clear? I want this and I want that. Or should that man be open? No, 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 no. no. Well, oh, okay. okay, okay, look, okay. You know I wrote a whole book on the whole man, right? But, okay, so... <laughs> Uh, for me, I was going to actually piggyback on what uh, Elam said about the uh, the five love languages. Um, mm -hmm. I really think that that's very important. Um, I actually bought the book while I was still married when I was trying to seek tools to, to help my marriage, right? And I learned, and that's where I learned what was my love languages and I took the quiz with my partner, but he wasn't engaged as much as I write. That's where the whole separation happened. I'm like trying to, to connect with him and figure things out. And he's like, and I don't, yeah, I'll do it. But there's no implementation because we needed help, but yeah. we didn't seek help. So I would say um, like having that, like learning what the love language is. I know that words of affirmations are minds um, and acts of service. So if 
your words are not kind and gentle and compassionate towards me, then I'm sorry, I can't be with you. Like, I can't be with someone that is cursing all the time or that's like, words are powerful. I don't know what it is, but it makes my spirit like just jump. So if you can't be loving to me in words, then we cannot connect. And then acts of service, if you go lay in the bed all day, uh, honey, yeah. I can't do that. It's going to get on my nerves. I'm sorry. You got to go work out. I'm a physical person. I need the house needs to be clean. You cannot be laying. No, you got to be doing something, moving something, acts of service. Yes, I'm a lot to handle, but that's just a part of my qualification, right? You got to be able to meet my love language. Um and then as far as like spiritual too, like I love going um, to church. I love praise and worship. That's just something that I do. I don't care. Sundays, I'm praise and worship. We going. So I love for my partner to be with me. Hey, um, fellas, y'all need to take notes. She giving y'all the gems to get, to get through it now. She giving her the gems, y'all. Y'all pay attention. Okay, she is single, y'all. She giving y'all the key right here. I'm like, go ahead, Ty, go ahead. But they get, give them the key. Go ahead. Just come two Sundays out of a month. I'm going to tell you. Because I like to go every Sunday. I Not just two Sundays. Sundays. Just two Sundays. Two Sundays, two Sundays might be two a lot. Two Sundays out of that is hilarious, yo. That is hilarious. The football game is on. It's two services. It's 8 o'clock service and 10 o'clock service. Get your ass up and come on to the 8 o'clock service and you gonna miss probably the ah, I like her. Ah. I, need I need God in our relationship. I need I need this. I need him to be in our spirit and everything. And I, I take that very like that is very important to me. So if you're not spiritual, I'm sorry. The door is right there. You're cool. not there. And it, sounds, it sounds like you're giving your qualifications. <laughs> and it, I mean, and okay. success, right? Like you have to stimulate me mentally. Mm -mm, like, come on, stimulate. Your goals, like where we going? Like I, I need you to be a man. I, 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 I need you to take the lead because I know that I, I'm not, I'm not a man, so I'm not going to take the lead. Okay, I, I need my man to lead. I, I, I'm gonna play my position, but when I need to lead, I'm gonna step in, and I'm best believe I'm gonna lead, right? Because I'm a boss. But uh, anyway, but yeah, so that's like some of the qualifications that I can go on the rant. Like I'm all like, Ty, calm down. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so uh Chastity Kanye, if you are you coming in the live or not? Because you I don't I don't fool I don't fool with Chastity because she is, she is, let me let me let me push back on Chastity real quick. She said qualifications equal expectations, which is a dangerous slope. I'm trying to figure out how if me having qualifications and expectations for myself. Wait, this, she said how that. is that a dangerous slope? And now here's the thing. Now, this is with a level of understanding that I kind of use the 80-20 rule, right? I might have this list or whatever, but there's an understanding that there's a, a level of compromise that I'm willing to do. Uh, right. Love is an action, right? Mm -hmm. It's not just a feeling. So if I, I love someone, I'm willing to take my qualifications and my expectations and see if this person can be a compliment. Then It's not that they have to hit a hundred percent across the board. We would all love that, but like how many people do we really know that that exists inside of that situation, right? So I want to make sure I'm kind of joking with you, but at the same time, I want to say that I don't think that there's anything wrong with having qualifications and having expectations, but then also having a level of maturity inside of yourself to understand that if I want to be with someone, that's a person with a whole nother brain and I have to be willing to compromise in certain areas that I'm willing to compromise in. And that what I'm willing to compromise in. Yes. Please pause right there. I think that that's very important right there that we're willing. We should already know that, right? Because in the process of healing ourselves, we should know like, oh, okay, if I meet somebody, I'm willing to compromise on these areas, like those like deal breakers like that. Because for me, I know that I... <laughs> 
I ask a lot of people because I, I'm like, I still, I still, I'm still, I'm like, oh, I, I'm attracting that. Oh, I'm still not healing. I, I still haven't healed. Like for me, those are like, like are, um, I guess those are like moments in like pause. I pause and say, ah, that doesn't really feel good. And those, I don't like that. I got to keep working on myself in those areas. So I pay attention to those things when they come up. Um, and I'm, I, I'm being very picky, you know, I, I know that picky. I'm picky. Like at first I, I just, just, I, I wasn't, I was just like, whatever. Okay. Now it's like, no, I know what I want. And when stuff keeps coming up and it's not what I want, I'm like, ah, I gotta go look in the mirror. What did, do I need to work on? Right. Um, because that's, I I'm gonna, that's how we're going to get what we want. We get what I'm we at, want. Right. I'm gonna have to work on my relationship with Chastity because my yeah, me and my relationship. Wait, on, Chastity, I don't, what do you mean? That's, I, not, that's not what who said. But no, that, well, when I guess she was saying that's not what I said earlier. I mean, okay. Oh, what, right. she, no, well, she's saying that's that's what she used. She said no, no. We are, she said that we're in agreement of the course. Well, she said qualifications, these expectations, which is a dangerous slope, and I'm just like, well, why is that dangerous? Well, but well, let me tell you know, you why. but only because I know Chastity personally. One of the things about expectations that we have to be careful about in relationships is that we hang our hat on our expectations. We got to okay. be real clear on expectations okay. and standards, right? So I have my standards and then I have my expectations. Expectations, like she said, are a slippery slope because we can't make anybody do what we want them to do, right? Okay. But I feel like sometimes inside of a relationship, even friendships, we're like, well, you were supposed to call me. How? I didn't even know that was a, a thing for you. I, you were supposed to do that. I didn't even know that was an expectation of yours. Or, right. and, and I think we need to throw away the word expectations in relationships, period. Because right. I think qualifications should be standards so that we're, because that word qualification comes, uh, it's, it's, it feels like a worth conversation, right? Okay. And so we can't, we don't want to say worth we don't want people to say, make people to think they're not worthy, right? But even if a person is a jerk, he's worthy, but that or she's worthy, but that doesn't mean they have the um, emotional intelligence and discipline to be a spouse, right? So even got jumped on about the word complications because I know you. I, I, don't, think, I don't. I am not scared of nobody. <laughs> that I, this is the understanding of man. I appreciate you joining Chastity. We love I love I love you. But oh, we understand we we and Chastity, we, we boy, we boys again, I think. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Listen, I, I think Adrian, yeah, Chastity, Chastity is also uh one I'm also one her publisher as well. So I know her thoughts, I know how she thinks. She's big on law of attraction. Yeah, we are right. we are right, Chastity. We are right. we she's big on what you attract. So back to what Taina was saying. Some of us, do, we married the person based on who we were at the time. Yes. Right. So when we evolve and the person does not evolve, then that that way we are in a situation where we're no longer growing. So that makes it bondage when... Do y'all hear that feedback? Is that you, Taina? No. I'm not I heard it for a second. It went away. I heard it. Um. So when we so when we're in a bondage situation within a marriage where someone is refusing to grow, not not um, they don't have the skill, they don't have the knowledge, they don't have. But there's a difference when you have the the, the skill and you have Elam always says skill versus will. Some people are like, I'm not doing that. I don't care. Hey, do you want to be married to me? This is what I need. You want to do it? Yes or no. And. I, we know people that said, no, I am unwilling to give you words of affirmation. I'm unwilling to give you sex. I'm unwilling to respect you. They will let you know straight up. So that person does not qualify, not only for marriage, but for marriage with me, right? Because you can't be an unwilling spouse. So it goes back to what Chastity was saying about you know, we all have to be careful about that expectation thing because it is a slippery slope. 
because people think you're trying to be funny. They think you're trying to control them. And you're like, dude, I just want us to grow. I just want us to evolve. I just want us to go to a next level. So if you choose not to, hey, you go and live happily ever after. Um, there was, I want to make sure that we talked about, we talked about the love languages just for those who, for the sake of, of the conversation, um, the love languages are acts of service. Um, and, and if somebody can put, put them in the comments, um, acts of service, uh, quality time, physical touch gifts and, uh, words of affirmation. Okay. Mine is acts of service. Donald Bell, honey, he can be, I'll be like, change the light bulb. Ooh, that's what I'm talking about. You better change that light bulb, boy. That's what I'm talking about, right? But then if there's another, if there's something that I don't feel loved because he missed that particular mark, I'm like, man, you know, is this something you want to do? So you got to, you that love language thing is not a cultural social experiment. It's a real thing. And I feel like sometimes, whether you're, as you're healing, for those of you who have gone through a divorce, you have to be clear that your love language is not about how you love, but how you receive love. So my husband's um, uh, love language is words of affirmation and physical touch. So I can't be trying to do acts of service with him and he'd be like, I don't need that. Right. And then I'm mad like, oh my God, you don't appreciate me. Uh, that's not what he asked for. So as we're reinventing ourselves after a uh, divorce, as we're healing after divorce, I want to make, I want to make sure that you keep in mind, let me go and take that test again. I also want you as a, as a takeaway, I also want you not only to do the um, five love languages test, even if you think you know yours, just do it again, because you may change. You might like gifts. You might like physical touch more than you think you do right? At this stage in your life. But I also want you to look at the apology languages, the apology languages. Now, some people, a lot of people would still be married if they would have mastered the art of the apology language. And the apology, yeah. there are five apology languages. And some of us, I know a lady who actually went back to her husband after she learned how to apologize. After he learned how to apologize to her, they were able to heal their marriage. So there's five love, five apology languages, expressing regret. It's like, I really, I'm sorry that I did what I did to you. And I regret hurting you or I regret breaking our relationship or whatever the case may be. The second one is accepting responsibility. People will be like, I didn't do that, sir, you're on camera. Are you serious? And they will act like they didn't do it. If, and that's why a lot of people get divorced because you won't even accept responsibility. And so a lot of people would still be married if the person would not have allowed pride to enter the marriage and then not even accept responsibility. So that's number two, accept responsibility. The third one is making restitution. That's my apology language. I don't need my husband to express regret. I don't care about you. Except I got to. I, 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 I got to. I got. I got to jump. I got to say something really quickly. <laughs> uh, okay. Why are your mouth got me like that? Okay, I'm going to see. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead, Okay. Five, and then just write your your point down. Okay, so express regret, accepting responsibility. Mine is making restitution. I don't care about <laughs> accepting responsibility. All I'm asking for you to do is fix it. How are you going to make me whole again? Right. Um, the fourth one is um, genuinely re genuine repentance. Genuine repentance means, hey, I cheated. I'll never do it again. Do it again. I'm sorry. Or I missed your birthday. I'm so sorry. I don't know who missed their spouse's birthday, but some people do. I missed our anniversary. Just don't let it happen again. Right. And then the last one is requesting forgiveness. Some people will say, well, I ain't do nothing. I don't need to apologize. You should. If that's how your spouse or ex receives love or receives that you actually care about them, just you can say, hey, will you forgive me? And I feel like a lot of couples would still be married if they met. I know the apology language saved my marriage. I ain't even going to lie to you. I ain't care no about them love languages. OK, I need to know if I mess up, I want to know how you need me to fix it. And if you mess up, I need you to hear how I need you to fix it. Go ahead, Elam. You said you want to. Uh, nah, 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 see, now why you got to do it like that? It doesn't, we don't have to be like you're that. Like, you're like, 
No, no, no. I honestly, I wanted to say in the middle. That's why I waited till you got to number three. If you really want me to be honest, to say that I think that this is very like important for people to kind of jot down or even go and Google because it is like I'm sorry can save a whole marriage. Absolutely. And as a relationship coach that has clients, I know that because I've had a, a spouse say if they could just apologize. And instead of somebody just standing firm and uh, we, 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 it looks like that we're going to have to have a part two of this to even go down this path. Cause this is like a whole, we can go a whole hour just on this space alone. Um, so I, I really appreciate, you know, the way that you kind of broke down the love language pieces and, and, and even just walking into this space of the apology language that that's like the honors course. So we got to like, we was keep we got to keep a college prep for the night. Cause that's honors and kind of, you know, that thing, I, Ty, what you think? Do we need to do a part two? Ty, every time we talk, we'd be like, okay, we need to do another every time. So you see what I'm saying? Like <laughs> it happens every time. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm sorry. Y'all, y'all go ahead. I, did, I, I just wanted to put that point in. All right. Does anybody have any questions uh, as we wrap up or, you know, just, <laughs> We're gonna get Why out are of you here. Laughing? What is We're gonna go and get out of here. <laughs> Anybody have any questions, comments, or emotional outbursts? Um, I hope this was good. This we even though we're having a very um uh, uh candid conversation, our goal here is for you to experience a new thought process about divorce, about personal development, about emotional intelligence, about self-improvement so that as you go into your next relationship you have the tools sometimes people just get stuck at divorce and don't make any adjustments that's right these two are I, I can attest they've written books they've done their their and they didn't write books from a place of i've arrived they've done it from a place of i'm healing so let me tell y'all about it Right. And so many of us need to go to another level when it comes to how we heal, how we move forward after divorce. If you're feeling stuck, reach out to Elam, reach out to Taina and say, thank you. I thought I knew what I was doing. If you're married, hey, y'all help me. Maybe I need to apologize to my husband. Right. And or my wife. Right. So that we can move forward. Taina, any closing remarks before we go? It looks like I think they probably scared to come in here with Elon, so they're not coming in here. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they don't you know, uh -huh. um, I would just say that if you're currently in a relationship, um, I don't know. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no. Uh, mm -mm. Elon, dang. Can't, no, just no. Cassidy, just, she, yeah, she just saying stuff. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm no. sorry, Ty. Go ahead. I would just say that if you're currently in a relationship and you're experiencing challenges, um, just communication is the key to everything. Like, and, and, and it comes from like a space of love, like genuinely wanting to see better for your relationship. Because sometimes we, the energy that we go in and address certain things um, in our relationship it's it's just like okay so i guess i want to fix this you know and it's just not received by the other partner in you know in the same way and you know what i'm talking about i mean we don't even have to go into you know it's like oh i gotta do this so let me just go do this nah do you really want to do it and do you really want to heal you have to really dig deep and you know pray <laughs> pray and ask God to really be present in the conversations that you're going to have with your partner so that you guys can heal together and see change. Right. And for the people that the, you know, that are experiencing with divorce, um, I would say um, don't jump into another relationship immediately. Like, ah, Heal. This is your opportunity to heal. And yes, it is difficult. And yes, it is lonely. And yes, it does require for you to detach from a lot of like things that, you know, people, communities, um, just you have to get 
in a space of alone to truly, truly heal. And healing might take, you know, it, it, it's, it don't take a few months. It may take one year. It might take two years. It might take three years. I've been on my healing journey for four years uh, come April. Well, January is when my 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 ex moved out uh, four years ago. So so it's been a long journey. And right now I'm, you know, dating. I want to date my kids now and my parents, you know, uh, and that's why I thought I was ready to date uh, a man. But I said, you know, no, nah, this year is I'm going to date my kids and my parents. Uh, so. I just want to just leave that to that individual women because that's who I can relate to is take the time to heal yourself. Um, and if you find yourself being lonely, um, just find activities. So what I like physical activities, right? So you can do like, you know, you can go. I do too. I, Look, I like go, physical activity. Whatever. Go run a marathon, do a bikini competition, go Take a sewing class, learn music, learn how to dance, you know, go to Elam and learn how to, I don't know, Elam. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Just get in tune with your inner child. Like, you know, um, yeah. Um, and for the record, Elam and Tyena are not dating. So I just want to let y'all know they are not a couple. They're not an impending couple. They not a they not a getting ready to be couple. I would never let Tyena date Elam ever. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I turned them down already. <laughs> That's it was, yeah, it was terrible. I would not sit here and take this. I would not sit here and take this. I but know um, like as a friend, so let's just keep it like that. I mean, no, I'm it's make sure that people are clear that this is not. You know, some because you know people will be like, yeah, you know, what's the name? I saw Elam. I saw. Oh, what? So I want to make sure we. I know it's a so what, but we, that's a real thing, Elam. After yeah. divorce, especially if you're a public figure, people will always hijack something and say it's, and you'll be like, what? No, this ain't got nothing to do with you, right? right. So we right. want to always, you know, just make sure that we cover our bases. Um, as far as that, Elam, um, any closing remarks on your show? No, I, first of all, just thank you both so much for just, uh, being in the company of everybody tonight, because the information that you guys have shared has been absolutely, absolutely amazing. Um, I, I just want to piggyback off of what Ty said about taking the time to heal. Uh, I think that step one is a level of forgiveness that we have to walk through, right? Mm -hmm. There's a shame, there's a blame that we, you know, ha walk around with, right? And that's that's some of the, even the, uh, as you evolve through the post-divorce space, there is, you know, as I, I like to call it family transition, right? As you're transitioning uh, your family, there is a shaming that, that can happen towards yourself. There's a blame that you can have, have. there is a, uh, you know, an embarrassment that you could have for yourself. So I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with where some people go sometimes, right? And there's stresses that can exist on top of that, right? So as all of that is being packed on top of itself, inside of that, you have an opportunity. Just like you know, we were talking about everybody has an opportunity, right? You have an opportunity. <laughs> you so petty. Okay. You so petty. Okay. You have an opportunity. I'm just sharing my information. You have an opportunity to heal. And everybody, I do believe that everybody, regardless of what you've been through, all jokes aside, everybody has an opportunity to heal through this process. It is a choice. And just like love inside of a relationship is a choice uh, with that other person uh, versus just it being a feeling, it's more of an action. Well, when you're in the post-divorce space, the love for yourself is also a choice and it also takes actions as well. And it's not just saying, I just want to improve. And then that's that. No, it's actually doing a due diligence and stay in that path. And there's going to be a lot of tears, right? Yeah. There's going to be some heartache, right? There's going to be some anxiety, right? There's going to be some prayer, right? There's going to be, and I just, just for my believers real quick, you want to know how you can get real close to God, <laughs> 
go through uh uh the the transition of your family yo you be like god it's just me and you like you just holding that's it you just holding on and that's just it and i'm saying just like my man j mark barnett says so i want to say it i'm kind of being a little candid with it but i want to be serious by saying you know it's okay to not be okay because you're not gonna be okay and be okay with not being okay, but know that there's another side and that's going to come from the due diligence of you giving, you know, yourself a little bit more love. So I definitely would say to forgive yourself and, and move towards more of a spirituality and then just really following your own path and pay attention to the people around you. Okay. Cause some of them people around you, like you're, there's a growth that's going to exist here. If you're going to grow, you have to pay attention to the soil that's around you and know that it's fertile just like you and if it's not there's the, the the transition of 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 the family sometimes can yield the transition of your inner circle as well so you and 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 a lot of times there's an impact that can exist on on you just from the people that you talk to that you counsel with so that's why i say adrian anti you know we can go another hour just on just that last piece with the just the apology language and then just oh it's so much here but I'm just thankful. I feel like that one person was touched tonight, in my opinion. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I love the fact that as we close, thank you, Taina. Thank you, um, Elam, for allowing me to um, host on your platform. Um, and I, I just really wanted to share um, that um, this is an ongoing discussion. And um, for those of you that are struggling with divorce, um, we pray for you. We we pray that you get through it, um, that you work on yourself, that you that you forgive not only yourself, but your ex. And that as you move forward and properly prepare for your marriage, for your next marriage, I want to make sure that you understand you are not broken. You are not damaged goods. If you are broken, please see a therapist fix the brokenness. You don't want to take that pain into a new relationship. You don't want to take that pain, that, that hurt, that betrayal, that disappointment into some of, some people have gone through some heinous things coming out of the divorce or coming through a divorce. This, you guys were a little bit different as far as how you guys had a personal growth um, spurt, if you will. But there are some people um, that have gone through infidelity, that have gone through uh, domestic violence, that have gone through an infidelity on both sides. The woman has cheated on the man too. And so sometimes everything is one-sided, but everybody has a story, especially those that have gone through divorce. So we pray for you. There is life after divorce for a person who is married I work on my marriage as often, daily, really. Um, and so it doesn't stop. The, the personal development does not stop. The personal growth does not stop. And so as you, even when, after your healing process, you still got to work on yourself even after you get married. And so we're rooting for you. I pray that even after listening to this, you say, hey, I have work to do. Do your homework. Your homework, your takeaway is the apology language. If you have not done it yet, um, redo the love languages just so you can stay fresh um, and then be okay with, like Elam said, not being okay. So we love you guys. Thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you for the amazing discussion. And I don't know, we, we might be back next month. You know, we'll see. We'll see. We do want you to join us actually on March 9th. Um, Elam and uh, his fellow authors, um, if Elam, if you want to hold up your book, When His Soul Cries is a compilation book that he's published with five other men where they are talking about the pain that they had with some of us women, honey. We we out here breaking the men, child. We breaking the men, okay? Uh, so they're talking about that and they're talking about themselves, how they could have taken accountability, how they could have done better in their relationship, how they was running through the women, honey, and they're taking accountability for it. So join us March 9th. Uh, that's a Thursday night at 7.30 p.m. Central Time, 8.30 Eastern. We'll, we'll uh, have something on our uh, platforms this weekend, uh, this week, so that you can join us. It's going to be just as fun, just as riveting. Um, we're going to have a great time um, and be ready to ask the men the questions that you want to ask. You all have an amazing night, and thanks for joining us. Bye! Bye! <laughs> Peace.